Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special presentation of poetry for National Poetry Month. My name is Frances Klippel, and on behalf of FRA, Florence, Florence Regional Arts Alliance, and Big Wave Poetry, we have a treat for you. These are our local poets or regional poets and people that regularly attend our open mic. And this last year, of course, it's been on Zoom. So we hope you enjoy. I'm sure you will love this poetry. So thank you for being here. Take care. My name is Jill Harden, and um, I'm going to read a few poems, a couple of which are from my book, No More to Need. And I have another one coming sometime. Anyway, okay, so, but this first one is called Pink. Pink is the river in loving her sky. She holds in depth for now his reflection while escorting gulls upstream to the pink. Look, she says, God's painting again, the gulls. Oh yes, we've come to be in the painting. How constant the change now gold, now yellow, now silver with blue, and the sun glinting their wings lights the field, casting shadows of freedom dancing. Twas a, tw a brilliant pink that first, it was, twas a brilliant pink that first caught my eye. Oh my God, what an artist you are and bringing so many gifts each day wrapped inside this constant change. Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. And this is uh, spring approaching. Four geese and two robins sharing green field. Soon, 100 geese, several robins, varied thrush, sparrows and such will share same field, pairing then. Oh yes, and of course, the ever unison flight of the starlings taking our breath with their sudden and perfect choreography of we many are one, punctuating every moment of our seeing them. Oh my God. So welcome are the gifts you bring, especially this delightful one, raising winters dark to bright, colorful, fanciful, warm, ever delightful spring. Thank you again, praises, awe, and blessings be that we all may see how free, truly free we all may be. And I was um, talking with somebody about the uh, amazing cruise boats out there um, polluting the ocean. <laughs> Anyway, but um, so the one and only one I've ever went on, I, I, I wrote a prayer the minute I got on, cruise prayer. Don't, less, don't let this cruise confuse me with so many to-dos to choose. Don't let my choosing abuse me with too much booze and snoozing. Rather, let this cruise bemuse me while the muses cruise on through me with more peaceful news of quieter decks below. Amen. And um, so when I found the quieter decks below, I wrote this poem watching, it was at nighttime. And so I was watching the ocean and the seagulls in the dark. Ocean of my mind, 
ebb and flow of ocean are my thoughts, and I let them as I watch these birds, their flock float to, from, back to our boat, pure white by light against black sky, as waves are white against black sea. Sky and sea ebb and flow, wings on wind, waves on water, come, go, ebb, flow, Bring my heart, ocean of my mind. And this last one, people always ask for, so I decided to do it. It's called Rap Song. Busy, busy minds, busy judging, busy minds, judging when we could be noticing the signs. The signs are all along the way, asking us a while to stay and read between the lines, the lines that judge us every day. Read between the lines, drop the whining and be kind. We can realize happily with hearts realigned the life of our own sweet loving design. If we recognize in everyone the truth of the divine, so let our busy minds be busy loving God instead, loving God in everyone, loving God in everyone, the truth between the lines, the truth in all the signs, the truth of all divinity is all that we all are divine. <laughs> I blew that one. Anyway, you got it. <laughs> Thank you all. Bless you all. Hello, this is Edie. And I just have three short poems. Um, and I'll just begin. How else could I have lived so much in joy without you? Your ability to play with words and silliness made all the hard times seem unimportant. Because when all was said and done, we had laughter and lust together. And what is love but joy and gratitude and that I have. And uh, the next one is, I remember the intimacy of milking the cow. I loved that task and the touch and the quiet of the cow. Then as she chewed her oats, breathing her flank as I quietly milked her, singing to her, reaching for the serenity she lives in, finding it in her and breathing it into me. For just a while, I breathe. And the last one, it is called, I am here. I am here, said the rose. I am here, said the iris. I am here, said the spruce. I am here, said the walnut. And here, I am here, said I. And I heard, we know. And that's all. This one is, the first one is called Hard Suffering Revisited. Hard Suffering Revisited. The sun is up yet. The park bench is cold, brother. Embrace the jade on your skin, for the lake reflects the true self. O oh, sustaining earth, mirror of the harvest. Millennium knows you are the pupil of his eye, his fauna and flora. You are the first and the last and the fire next time. History remembers you were once but a man whose dignity was gnawed upon in the hot fields of white cotton whose pride was plowed into the mud of rich savannas. 
whose back was tattooed from the whips of Conroe bosses, making you an obdurate being. Many a night, you crack open the yoked sap of animistic hatred, chant and dance the Shango hymns of freedom and sprinkle the stars with tears. But you are born of a unique race. No chains or fetters can stop you. Get up and wipe the past on your cheeks from hard suffering. No foxhole is too small and no Serengeti too large, for you are the placenta of Ubuntu, the essence of human oneness. The son of unity calls you, go, for 500 years of lynching is enough to listen. Now look at the White House, its walls rendered with black sweat, yet a logo of human rights stamped upon its brow. Listen to the I have a dream speech on the White Hill Revisited. Listen to the songs of the resonance of your ancestral spirits left across the ocean floors. Listen to the crescendo of broken chains. Look at the new digital diets, the blogger busters, the Twitter gossipers, the Facebook generation, appallingly wary of the past, appallingly hungry for change, inexhaustibly ready for national catharsis. They hoot songs of repulsion, graffiti historic values, and write epithets on engraved conservatism. Hooray for the turban of democracy. Hooray for the nation's apology for slavery and the burning of Jim Crow's Bible. Hooray for the reincarnation of tears and laughter. Hooray for the lantern of tolerance and hope. And between breaths of retrospection and jubilation, pause to gaze into the sun of unity for unity. This is called a black bearded West Indian. Here again, mounting the cosmic wheel, as if to say adieu to the last dimension of love, the one squeezed from a plastic jar. You I see and my black sisters as flamboyant temptations at the Delta of myself being wrapped around the joints with your smiles, forgetting the yesternights in the velocity of the wheel as it turns. Resonance on the track, your voice is slowly coming into tune with the rising sun, echoing a black bearded West Indian in the Sahara of affluence, amid weeds of sands and decadence. Inhale the aroma of the new growth Measure the footprints between the nostalgic track. Look beyond the rainbow and there you will find the stamp of the trident and the kiss of patience. And the last one, I'm gonna read a poem called Reflections. Her silence slishes and slushes upon the rocks with a rhythm that swallows the stillness of a dead night. Moments that are lost except the memory of the day 
and the fullness of a life pass. Live on, soft and cuddly in the gentle murmur of a creek. Thank you. Am I unmuted? You're, you're ready. I'm Catherine Damon Dawson. I wrote this poem January 12th, 1991, when friends visited and we took them to the Sea Lion Caves. It's a playful little poem called Ode to the Sea Lion. Be whiskered, foot flippered bag of bones molded to rocky bed, entrenched in this cave with cousins and aunts cuddled from flipper to head, disturbed out of sleep by restlessness, intruded upon once more, awakened again with food on your mind, smelling a fishy roar, urged on by craving to head for the surf through zones of hostility, be whiskered, foot flippered, bag of bones, undulate back to the sea. The next little poem was written uh, for a poetry contest that the Sayuslan News had, or that the it was featured in the Sayuslan News. It's called Kingfisher at Work. Rust vested kingfisher in gray flannel suit, fly in for business on a high rise roost, alert to the action with black intent eyes, plunge into the water and catch your prize. This next one is a nostalgic poem written after I visited my parents sh shortly before they both passed away in early 2000. It's called I Climbed the Stairs. I was raised in a large farmhouse and lots of bedrooms upstairs. I climb the stairs. I climb the stairs to the rooms of my youth, hear their familiar creak and remember stepping cautiously to avoid those steps when I got in too late. I climbed the stairs to the last room I claimed as mine. The first was with my widowed mother. We slept downstairs so she could hear grandpa who built this house. Invalid, he lived in the downstairs bedroom. I slept with mom until our stepdad came. Then I slept upstairs in one big bed tummy to back with four older sisters, keeping warm against sparkling frost swirling thick on middle room window panes. I climbed the stairs to the rooms of my youth, suddenly jumped two steps at a time, a giggle escaping, still feeling a sister pinch my bottom as I tried to flee up ahead of her. I climbed the stairs to the south room Envision the mouse who slept on my bed. He'd startle at the light and leap for his hole. Then I'd crawl in, wishing his body had provided more warmth. I climb these worn stairs, touch the woodwork, feel my grandmother whose hands finished this house. Her labor, a legacy to those she died too young for us to know. I climbed the stairs to the north room, sense the ghosts that climb before me, hold my breath a little, loving the old parents who now sleep downstairs, knowing that too soon their ghosts may also be climbing these stairs. Thank you. I'm, I'm the spouse of, I'm Rand Ran Dawson. We're out here at Silkus Lake. And here's a couple of, of kind of seasonally appropriate uh, efforts. The first is actually based on our experience in, in Alaska and it, and it refers to a Mr. Hartman. And, and this is Edward Hartman, who was a very rich railroad magnate at the turn of the 20th century. 
actually 19th century into the 20th, and he financed a bunch of expeditions into Alaska, where John Muir, the famous naturalist, was part of this. So this first is called John Muir. Muir on wealth after meeting Hartman. I don't think Mr. Hartman is very rich. He has not as much money as I have. I have all I want, and Mr. Hartman has not. Second is more seasonal. It's called down and dirty. You can see something exceptional about an average seed. The average seed, the non-triumphalist seed, the seed burrowing through what we short-sightedly call dirt. The weed seed, the good seed, the smart seed that travels through the intestines of a species, the intestinal book of species on its calibrated journey, the top seeds of onions that overbend to replant themselves with no thought of remembrance for fame or profit. We smack our lips for you. The next one's kind of non-edible. Weeds I have known. I murmur and more at these weeds, which only prove how I am disconnected from reality. Going to seed is their job. That's an aging poem, okay. Next is arrhythmia. I'm not medically oriented, I might be mispronouncing it. Arrhythmia. In a warm April wind looking out the windows, a new leaf Alder leaf flutters in a hundred variations. Inside, the heart fibrillates, and industry is based on it. Evolution. And a final effort here. In route to the circumstantial. We had never expected a guided tour beyond the Rust Belt but we hope for some form of decision from the merchants of doubt as choices appeared to narrow in a churning rising sea of paper or plastic. They left us on the only shore we could reach at the time, stenciled across their stern were their last words of advice. If the weather's good, wait. Only move the log once. Bankers like people who take baths. Remember, you're only on loan from Mother Nature. And fill out the form completely. We pondered our options. We waved. Then we stared down on our feet, spread pages apart, like forgotten footnotes. Thank you. Paul Klippel from Florence, Oregon. <clears throat> I have two poems. The first poem was written October 6, 2020. There were fires up and down the West Coast, all things. When ash falls from the sky and dream catchers fill with remains, when moon gives no light and sun hides in smoke filled days, I will consider my place in the sediment of all things. When fear makes it hard to breathe and vision becomes impaired, when in sleep fires burn and I am forced from my bed, I will consider my place in the spirit of all things. When fire fuses particle to spirit and the spiral path illumines, when the unseen becomes seen and emotions flow even with the tide, I will consider my imagination in reach of all things. When collapse touches the final void and science and religion become one, 
when deception finds no purchase in the wild reaches of my mind, I will consider my faith expanding from all things. When leaders lose their way and followers only follow, when every truth whispers a lie and every lie speaks a truth, I will consider my words as responsible to all things. When spirit stirs imagination and seeds dormant in my heart awaken, when the fields of action have been sown, cultivated, harvested, only then can I consider my life as connected to all things. The second poem, uh, April 10th, 2021, thoughts on vaccines, it's called herd immunity. Perhaps we must first think as animals, imagine ourselves the cloven foot herd before unity comes to us. So easy then to see it, the equality of each hoof grazing or stampeding is heard. Impossible really to make distinctions, one hoof from the other, each kicking up their own dust. It must be human then to separate, your foot from my foot, our identities fabricated in shoes. Lions, when they hunt, make distinctions, separate the weak from the herd. For them, there is only instinct no hatred, superiority, or fear, just the natural need to feed. So different from us, those living outside nature, who construct reality from some illusion. When hunting, they hunt each other. Our herd falls apart, separates. We fall below the beasts. Nature, in the end, will rescue us send its humble representative to Im immunize us from ourselves, that we can think it all, manifest thought with our hands, separates us from the beast. We will find the vaccination needed, immuni immunize ourselves as one herd before we stampede over the hill or the cliff. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you all for being here today. This wraps up our open mic that we have created especially for you today. And um, thank you to our poets, Rand, Catherine, Jill, Eric, Edith. We really appreciate, and Paul. <laughs> We really appreciate your poetry. It was so beautiful. Okay, everyone take care. <laughs>